It seems that the Mondeo is a fairly popular car. But this is on the one hand. On the other hand, he has a rather difficult path to the people's favorites, not the easiest fate and a somewhat controversial reputation. For some, he will always remain an overgrown focus, for someone a weak rival of the Toyota Camry and Nissan Tina. And someone will love him so much for the opportunity to sail along the road, even if spending a lot of money on this voyage. The latter, however, will not be so much. The Route Monde, world in French, appeared in the name not by chance. The model was developed on both sides of the ocean and tried to adapt to the needs of both major markets at that time, European and American. True, the goal was never achieved. For the Americans, the car turned out to be too small and expensive against the background of the same Taurus. The model was saved by great success in Europe. The second generation of 1998 was also not particularly successful. In America, he was not accepted again, and it became clear that the time had come to change something. And the third Mondeo was completely different. It appeared in 2000 and immediately declared itself loudly with its dimensions and interior. Mondeo has become much larger, and most importantly, its interior has changed. Strict German notes appeared in it and noticeably more passive safety elements, belt pretensioners, airbags, good side impact protection. Finally, they took care of the normal anti-corrosion protection the previous Mondeos rotted too quickly. In addition, this Ford had a good range of engines. Gasoline one started with a volume of 1.6 liters and ended with V6 engines with a volume of 3 liters. There were also diesel engines of the Puma family, developed jointly with PSA. The car turned out to be successful, and it was already much easier for the fourth generation Mondeo to fight in the market for a place in the sun. It's funny that again everywhere, excluding America. The fourth generation Mondeo has become even larger. There is nowhere else. The platform has become completely new EUCD, developed jointly by Ford and Volvo, therefore, close relatives of this Mondeo are, for example, Range Rover Evoque and Land Rover Freelander and Volvo XC60 and Volvo S80. There are even more engines, an inline 4 with a volume of 1.6 liters, almost like in the Focus, 4s with a volume of 2 liters, 145, 200 or 245 horsepower, and with 2.3 liters, 161 horsepower. Inline 5 with a volume of 2.5 liters from Volvo, 220 horsepower. In addition, there were diesel engines with a volume of 2.0 and 2.2 liters, 140 and 175 horsepower, respectively. There were also many gearboxes, two mechanics, a six-speed automatic Eisen and a power shift robot, which appeared after restyling. In general, there was a choice. In addition, in Russia, these Mondeos were assembled in Sevilovsk near St. Petersburg, though only sedans, so there were no problems with popularity. And with what they were, we will learn about this from the reviews of the owners of these cars. Hate number five, ground clearance. I don't know what people who buy a Mondeo and go fishing on it think. In my opinion, it is quite obvious that with a base of 2,850 millimeters, a clearance of 130 millimeters is very ridiculous. Like a dachshund, only a car. Therefore, there is nothing strange that many disappointedly write, the main disadvantage is ground clearance. It is catastrophically small. Constantly clings to the front skirt and sills. By the way, the front skirt is also often broken. Then, of course, comes the realization that, do not drive off-road, this car is not for that, but it's too late. By the way, when choosing a car on the secondary, pay attention to the suspension. It is generally reliable, but they put all sorts of spacers and springs from some S-Max. Love number five, front seats. I would never have thought that I would seriously talk about the fact that the owners of some car are so enthusiastic about the chairs that they write about them in almost all the reviews. Moreover, they write in such a way that the court poets of some monarchs can envy, their odes are very far from some of the reviews of the Mondeo owners, wonderful seats, long, legs do not hang down, soft, and you can drive 900 kilometers a day and come out a living person, and not a half-dead person. 
Naturally, it cannot do without comparisons. The seats in the Mondeo are no worse for me than the Volvo ones. My height is 180 centimeters. My weight is 92 kilograms. I sit down wonderfully. Of course, the comfort of the seats is primarily appreciated by those who spend a lot of time on the track. Mondeo has this in principle, so there are many such reviews. 1,700 kilometers with stops at gas stations, no problem. However, it is worth making an important remark. And I won't do it myself, but through someone else's mouth, the front seats are normal only in titanium, and lower trim levels they are tougher, and there is no lateral support. And one more thing, the front seats have a bad habit of squeaking. Usually the sled is to blame, and lubricating them often solves the problem. Other than that they are really good. Hate number four, trunk. The dimensions of the fourth Mondeo are truly royal. And 486 liters of trunk volume in a sedan is a lot. But, we read, the trunk seems to be large according to the papers, but due to the narrow opening it is very inconvenient. Well, or a little more emotionally, the trunk is large, but stupid long and narrow. Yes, there is such a problem. In general, the quotes above describe it completely, Getting to the rear wall of the trunk is difficult, and stuffing something into its narrow opening is even more difficult. As a result, it turns out that it is somewhat difficult to use the entire volume. And if the owner is small in stature, then sometimes they say that this is simply impossible. In addition, the trunk has another feature, the wires that go in the bundle through the trunk lid rot. The rear lights and lock stop working. It is treated easily, but infuriates notably. Love number four, the cost of upkeep. To be honest, the cost of maintenance took an honorable fourth place in this list with a slight stretch. It happens that in the Mondeo you have to swell an abnormally lot of money. But if the car is well-groomed, if it does not have a power shift robot, then the content of the Mondeo will not be much more expensive than the content of the Focus. People express themselves quite cautiously, it's not very expensive to say about the service staff, it doesn't require a lot of investments. Of course, it's true, but it's important to remember two points, focus service also doesn't always turn out to be budgetary, so this cheapness is not quite penny. Well, and secondly, Mondeo has expensive items under repair. So if you're not lucky, you can forget about the affordable cost of ownership. But if you buy a car with a 1.6 liter engine and a manual gearbox with a 2.3 liter engine or a 2 liter diesel engine without exorbitant mileage and a classic automatic transmission, then you can count on a more favorable outcome. The only pity is that most Mondeos of this generation are already heavily hackneyed and a shatney. But there was a time when the owners advised on the forums, I can recommend the purchase to the thrifty if you want a moderately solid car. Here it is important to find a good service, where these cars are not only known, but also loved. Some breakdowns, which many solve for very obscene money, are actually fixed for very modest amounts. So there is a way out, but you have to look for it. Hate number three, steering rack and the cost of some parts. It is logical that after the previous love there should be a corresponding hate. Yes, there are some things in the Mondeo that almost certainly break and cost crazy money. First, let's take a look at the steering rack. She is with the usual power steering, but this does not mean that she is simple and hassle-free. The rack is knocking, the power steering is buzzing, money is flying out of pockets to tens of thousands. When repairing a power steering, many people advise changing the tank, a not very successful valve causes insufficient fluid pressure. The compressor hums, hums, and then dies. The original is expensive. With the rail, the situation is slightly different. It can be repaired in time for same money. If this moment is missed, then it is quite possible that you will get to replace the rail assembly, which is quite expensive. Secondly, I added one more reason not to like the Mondeo to the rail, the obviously overpriced cost of some spare parts. I didn't single it out separately for a simple reason, these expensive things do not break for everyone and not always, unlike Reiki, but if they break, they are incredibly angry. And then people notice, cheap consumables, even very cheap. Although there are little things that cost like a helicopter. 
Well, some numbers from those who are unlucky, some parts are very expensive, for example, a rear wiper motor 10,000 rubles, a seat heating button 8,000 rubles. At the same time, analogs are not always obtained much cheaper. So many people have to periodically climb into the egg pod. Love number three, body. For a quality body, this generation should be grateful to the previous one. In preparation for the transition to water-based paint, Ford specialists have worked very seriously with the bodywork, trying to protect it as effectively as possible from future corrosion. And they did it. The third Mondeos quite staunchly resisted rust, now they are, of course, mostly already rotten, but time and not very high quality repairs after an accident are to blame, the fourth ones turned out to be no worse in this respect. There are a lot of reviews on this topic, and they are almost all the same, the body does not rot even in Moscow, but, however, if it was not beaten, and the car was galvanized, during the operation, about a dozen chips appeared from stones on the hood, wings, doors, did not process or paint them in any way, rust did not appear anywhere, the body was processed just fine, paint chips in the area of the front arches, but the iron does not bloom. And one more important note, many people appreciate not only the quality of the paintwork, but also the metal itself, the body of the car is made of good thick steel and covered with the same layer of paint. Yes, Mondeo has good metal. But do not think that all these cars in the secondary market are shiny with fresh paint. Still, they are no longer very young, and if chips and scuffs are not removed in time, the iron will still rust. Sad but true. Hate number two, electricity. Unfortunately, electrics are not Mondeo's strongest point. What's wrong with her? I already spoke about the harness in the trunk lid. And not only I said, somewhere at 90,000, my trunk stopped opening. It's all about the wiring leading from the body to the trunk lid. Its braid is quite tough and over time, if you often use the trunk, the wires simply break. The most interesting thing is to open the trunk. You need to climb inside the trunk from the passenger compartment and disassemble the lock. I put the wires on, and everything is buzzing. As you can see, there is not only a problem, but also a way to fix it. The second frequent breakdown is the fuel pump terminals stopped on the highway and could not start. The reason is the fuel pump and not a breakdown, but stupidly non-contact in the terminal block. Let's be honest, the fuel pump itself also does not differ in survivability, and not always the problem can be solved solely by repairing the terminals. But in some cases, it helps. The third trouble is the parking sensor's wiring. A classic case, by 100,000, the parking sensors refuse to work. The wires from the parking sensors go under the bumpers and are practically not protected by anything. Wires simply rot away over time. A trip to the electrician, finding a break, repairing the wiring, and that's it. It would seem a trifle, a cheap repair, but still unpleasant. Although these problems were also on the pre-styling version, they were never solved. Well, everything is clear here. Of the less critical glitches, we note the errors of the radio. A radio tape recorder hung a couple of times. The sound from the Bluetooth device did not work. It was treated by dropping the battery terminal for five minutes. The case is also not isolated. The worst thing about electrical problems is that they are numerous and unpredictable. Power windows may hang. The head unit may fail, sometimes the dashboard refuses to work, although much less often than in the Focus. Some of these problems are very annoying, although there are owners who have not even heard of them. In addition to the fuel pump, it dies for everyone, except for those who drive diesel Mondeos, of course. Those have enough problems of their own, for example, with an eternally dirty airflow sensor and an EGR valve. Love number two, suspension and soundproofing. Yes, yes, these things are not connected in any way, but we still put them in one row. What to do if they are praised equally often? But, to be honest, there is really nothing to talk about here. The reviews are quite monotonous and do not require decoding. Soft suspension. Definitely softer than the Passat, Optima, and Mazda. Noises on top. You talk at 130 without raising your voice, rides like a stone on the highway, does not waggle. 
The suspension is quite soft, it steers well, it is quiet in the cabin, the sound insulation is decent, the engine is audible only during intensive acceleration. These advantages are especially pronounced on the track. Many owners scold the Mondeo for its immodest dimensions in the city and at the same time praise it for its behavior on the highway. Many sincerely believe that it was built exclusively for suburban use. If your element is a country track, then this is clearly your car. When traveling, this is a huge roomy ship. It's smooth on the track. Hate number one, power shift robot. Those who have bought restyled Mondeos since 2010 with six DCT450 robots often believed that the fate of the owners of robotic focuses would pass them by. Like, those boxes are dry while ours are wet. And they will serve for a long time. There is some common sense in this judgment, and the clutch on the Mondeo lives longer. But that's where the good news ends. Yes, there were usually no problems for the first tens of thousands of kilometers. But then people suddenly realize that this robot is absolutely unrepairable f asterisk 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 at the cost of almost half a lemon. One can argue about non-repairability, now they are being repaired quite successfully. But the term itself is chosen correctly. The cost of repair, of course, can be different. Where these boxes are known, you can get off with a not very terrible amount, but in small towns, unfortunately, this box is still often feared. But the owners of Optimism do not lose. The solution to almost any problem with PS costs no more than 150,000 rubles. PF, 150,000 rubles. A trifle. Well, another quote to think about, buying a Ford Mondeo with power shift was a huge mistake. I wish I had bought another car. Any other car. Love number one, cabin size. I think this feature of the Mondeo will not shock anyone. I would like to put reliability in the first place or something as significant, but no. The best thing that Mondeo owners find in their cars is its size. Combined with a good suspension, this Ford is almost the perfect car for long family trips. Plenty of space both front and rear. Particularly pleased is the back row, where you can sit cross-legged. Well, the rest of the space is fine. The back seat is comfortable, passengers fall asleep, it lulls you when driving on the highway, a huge interior, plenty of legroom in front and rear passengers. So, despite some shortcomings, Mondeo knows how to win the hearts of owners. And probably well deserved. And even if something goes wrong with him, his main advantage will not go anywhere, a lot of space in the cabin, just a lot of it.